Give the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for the 28th of July, 2022. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today, we have a uh, notice of intent uh, for construction of an accessory residential structure on uh, the, uh, North Farms Road uh, that applicant has requested a continuation, so that'll be brief. And then a request for determination of operability to determine if septic work within the buffer zone will alter an area subject to our jurisdiction, this on Dumphy Road. Also, we have a request for a certificate of compliance on Ridgeview Road. Uh, so first though, um, ask, uh, we have minutes to approve, but let me first ask if there's any general public comment um, that isn't uh, addressing any of the specific cases on our uh, agenda for tonight. I'm not sure if that's where I come in and uh, Mark Burton, he's in my lower right-hand corner. I'm, my name is Linda Hannum, I live in Hadley. I'm a coach and a rower in the Northampton Community Rowing uh, Facility. And uh, Mark had alerted some folks to tonight's meeting with the hopes that we can uh, garner some support to get some additional help at that uh, location for trash, for policing the, the uh, drinking, for the use of the beach, the water and the woods for human waste. And so I'm not sure, I sent an email earlier to you, Sarah, with photos, and I think hopefully you've shared them with folks. It's been uh, pretty awful to see what's been going on down there. It's been a quiet little secret for eight years or so that we've been there as a crew team. And then last year, it started to explode with people saying, wow, this, this is a great thing. And it is uh, access to this gorgeous, uh, river that we have going for 15 miles of waterfront, both in Hadley and in Northampton should have public access. Um, but it's gotten out of hand and we need help and we can't have kids picking up broken glass and we don't have enough rubber gloves for them to be touching human waste tissues and et cetera, et cetera. So don't know where solutions lie or where opportunities lie and what we could do to try to curb some of this behavior. It's, you know, the, the animals are out of the barn. It's, you know, it's too late to think, hey, we should put up a gate. So I don't know. And uh, Mark, I don't know if you have anything, or I don't even know what your committee does, quite honestly, I'm, I apologize <laughs> for not knowing that. Like, <laughs> you look like cool people, I like that. And uh, um, anything with conservation and preserving our, you know, our communities, I'm behind 100%. So. It's my little well, spiel. Th thank you for, for, for bringing it up. And yes, Sarah did uh, uh, forward your email and those photos. And it's the first uh, we've been notified of this problem. Yeah. I, I, uh, um, my, my son's a row well still. He used to row in the old uh, community rowing over on the Oxbow and uh, then yeah, went off the same college here. and rowed. Um, and, you know, Brown's at the head of the Charles uh, Silver in the New England Collegiate Championships. Uh, so I'm, I'm an enthusiastic supporter of, uh, of, of rowing. And but I hadn't been aware that this place is, is getting trashed. It didn't used to have a, much of a beach there. I mean, it was uh, yeah. uh, sort of just woods to the water. But I gather that a lot of sand has built up over the last few years. So uh, Sarah, though, has when she and I talked earlier today, has told me that this has uh, indeed caught fire at the city level. And Sarah, you want to talk about what the beginning plans are? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, this is all pretty recent. When the city acquired this property, we were so excited to be able to protect uh, some riverfront area as well as provide an, an access for 
rowing and kayaking and there was no beach that existed at that time, but due to some changes in the river, a, a really attractive place to go swimming and, and wading and fishing has developed um, along with some really serious use issues. Um, so this is something that the city's definitely taking seriously. I don't know if anyone has seen the social media post that the Northampton Police Department has published, but you know, they're making it very well known that this will not be tolerated and, there, and some overtime officers will be down there um, through the weekend to enforce the rules and, and let people know that this isn't something that can happen. Uh, and city departments are also going to be convening a meeting next week. Yeah, it's been, I mean, Mark sees it from the, the water side. Uh, we're on the land side. Mark's one of the, the famous boaters. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's, I even went down from the Hadley side a few weeks ago and filmed across. I mean, that there's a no wake zone that is completely being ignored. I mean, I obviously have concern just about the sanitization. What's sanitary? What I mean, people are pooping in the woods. It's awful. Mark has pictures. It's you know they they'll poop on the side of the the porta potty that's up near where you know, and that's something the Hamp crew we pay for, and we pay for our own trash pickup. And it, you know, it's, uh, it's saying that or it's just gonna stop is is isn't gonna it isn't gonna stop. And and part of me's feels like it almost shouldn't we should just realize that there's people that really want to go in the water and they really want to put their feet in whether there's sand and this this is a great place to do that it's just you know the the actions of the few are really ruining it uh for a, a you know the community it really is and we're we're still trying to raise one hundred eighty thousand dollars to build docks and, and like literally a wheelchair ramp to go over to that beach to increase the, the ability for people uh, who are differently able to have access to riverfront. And so this is really making, put a wet blanket on my feeling of like, how do I keep going asking people for more money to support this, to make it easier for people to drag coolers across the handicapped accessible bridge. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad. And so, I mean, Mark, do you have something you wanna add? Yeah. you. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. All right. I am outside. It's a little windy out. Um, my name is Mark Britton. I own property on the Hadley side. I'm directly across from Elwell Island. Um, I'm about three quarters of a mile uh, south of that beach area that we're talking about. Public access is awesome. It's it's a great opportunity to pe for people to access the river and enjoy the summer, spring, fall, fishing, whatnot. Um, but there's got to have some, we got to have some control over there. Um, uh, Linda, Linda spoke for that beach. Um, I'm also seeing problems on Elwell Island. I reached out to DCR. DCR told me that the city of Northampton also owns that island. There's a lot of trash. People leave their camping supplies and material um, on that island. If we get any type of high water, that stuff is going to be dislodged. That's going to end up going down the river, eventually down into the sound. Um, Rainbow Beach is a, a non-access point for... Uh, vehicles or pedestrian traffic, you might get a couple here and there, but Rainbow Beach, we're having the same problem down there, and that's with the boater community. Um, there's uh, a few troubled people that don't know how to take their trash out. They'll bag it up, but they'll leave it there uh, for other people to clean up. They got dogs on that beach down there um, that are defecating. Same thing up up at the beach next to the road club. But um, you know, Northampton's a green a green city. And this has kind of been going unnoticed. This has been happening for probably about a year and a half, two years mm -hmm. since that beach got discovered, I think on social media. Um, mm -hmm. I've spoke with uh, Lieutenant Borowski of the, of the NPD. I've reached out to the Board of Health. I have not got a phone call back from the Board of Health. That's why Linda and I are coming to you tonight. Um, I know Hadley Conservation uh, wouldn't tolerate something like this. We, uh, we had Mitch's Island shut down uh, in the Hadley side for camping. It's a day use only um, access by boats. And it seems like we curbed that issue uh, with help of the uh, task force and the environmental police. And I, I talked to Sergeant Unitas of the Massachusetts Environmental Police. And he said that as long as Northampton gave them t the, uh, the okay, they could patrol the island, that beach area and uh, down a rainbow and enforce any type of rules or regulations the city has in place that, that aren't being enforced and you know, kind of alleviate 
uh, the NPD from, from uh, you know, trying to get on the water. I invite anybody on, on this conservation commission, if you want to see it from a bird's eye perspective, uh, I have a registered and insured boat with all the, you know, legal flotation uh, devices and everything. I am welcoming you to come out. I work nights, so I'm always available during the day. I can give you a tour. It's something I kind of did uh, a few years ago with Mitch's Island with some uh, people in Hadley and, uh, you know, people that own that property on Mitch's. So you have an open invite. Um, I kind of, I kind of watch out for the river. I do a cleanup. Uh, I try to do it in the spring and the fall. And, you know, the, the workload of cleaning up after a whole summer, it's just, it's, it's getting tiring and it's, it's just, you know, it's getting worse ever since COVID. Uh, it seems like the river's uh, got a higher frequency of people and that beach area. I mean, I'm not exaggerating three to 500 people were on that beach Saturday and Sunday, and that beach should have a capacity, no more than like a hundred people. And there's no facilities and no place to dump the garbage. So you're going to get the bad apples. And uh, that's about it. And thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for bringing this forward. Uh, it, this, uh, and unless you're out there on the river and I haven't been yet this year, so I haven't seen it. And, um, it, uh, this is the first time it comes before us. And there are, it, it's sort of a complicated, Sarah said that a lot of city departments are gonna have to get involved because the uh, uh, park and rec has part of the responsibility for the area around the boathouse. Uh, we have responsibility for the greenway. Uh, there is, uh, there, as you say, the environmental police uh, down at uh, um, Rainbow. There's uh, uh, also uh, a state, uh, property. So there's a lot of different moving parts here, but so who can, who can mobilize on behalf of trying to fix this? And uh, Sarah, wanna, do you know? I'm sorry, I just want to second one thing that Mark had said that um, if, if he can do the, we can do the surf and turf, he'll do the, uh, the, the water tour and I'm happy to do a, a, a meet at the boathouse and maybe Mark can meet us at, at the dock there and continue on. If you haven't seen this facility, if you haven't walked around it, it's a really, it's a hidden gem and it, and it became discovered. And, and to Kevin's point that that beach was not present five years ago. So different water currents, things have happened that there used to be a beach north uh, of there in Hadley called Sandy Beach. I think that beach is now all where uh, the, this location is in, in Northampton. So 10 years from now, it might be gone again, which, you know, um, but in the, in the interim, you know, uh, my thinking, and I got an email back from Carolyn Mish saying, hey, there's no facilities at any Northampton parks anymore because of uh, we don't have the uh, staffing. Well, you don't need a staff person for a porta potty. You know, someone has to lock it at, at nine o'clock at night and we open it up again. We do that with ours. You know, we do have people at our that location every single morning of, of the week and, and into you know midday and you know it, it, it could be a simple thing like maybe for a while and I say hey, it's 150 cars coming in there Saturday five bucks a car that's enough to pay for 40 porta potties for a you know an entire month I mean I know we probably just that's the old-fashioned way you get the the fireman's boot out there and collect money but um we gotta do something we can't have that many people down there and not have a Northampton can't have a park with, with no place to, to go to the bathroom. We worry about so, the dog's poop, you know. And so Linda, as I mentioned, the, a lot of different city departments are going to be meeting um, as soon yeah. as availability allows, hopefully right. in the next week. Uh, and right. NCR is an incredibly valued partner. And we all love what you do and want to continue having a good relationship in the future. Yeah, so and, we'll be and we're willing well. to, to do work. I mean, it, it's not like we're, it, it's not our responsibility, but it's, it's, it's got, it just got harder the last two years. And to Mark's point, it, you know, a few years ago it was, you know, hey, we picked up a little bit and this is, wow, there's something in the parking. It looks like someone had a party and, you know, but now it's, it's crossed the line where, you know, we have these gloves and special picker upper pinchers because it's, you know, human waste tissues and it's not something kids should be touching, you know, or, or adults for that matter. So um, I think, so I, anyways, I know you have a rest of a full robust agenda. <laughs> so, uh, Please let us know you have our contact. Mark and I are, you know, happy to. And, just and we may it. take you up on the offer for uh, a tour. Um, yeah. Uh, that they, uh, in the meantime, I think first step is uh, Sarah to 
uh, let us know when this multi-sector uh, meeting actually is scheduled so that uh, we can provide some input and hear from them what the possible solutions might be. Um, but it, we have similar problems, by the way, and leads along the, uh, uh, the Mill River, uh, trash, diapers, uh, loudspeakers, you know, hundreds of people. Uh, so this is, isn't the only conservation area that uh, um, we're having to fight this kind of battle. And many people are you know, well-behaved and respectful of the place, and then many people are not. And that kind of, if you could count on everybody carrying in, carrying out, and uh, treating things with respect, then yeah, wear and tear would still be an issue, but uh, you can't, turns out, can't count on that. So right. we'll, we'll see what solutions we can come up with. Uh, Excellent. And we will be in touch, but thank you very much for bringing it to us. Thank and you guys, have a great. Yeah, it's sorry, it comes and goes. Some years it's really popular, some years it's it's less so. It's, it's no, kind they of would make on what uh, the beaches look like yeah, yeah semi permanent camps on Elwells Island for the whole week, and, and that was mostly the voters. That was the way to get out there, anyways. But, but it was at huge... least on the on the Damon Road side, the police will be out there this weekend. So hopefully that, that calms things down a little bit, at That's least right. in the interim. The, uh, the semi-permanent camps are starting uh, to develop again on Elwell. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's they're, older. Yeah, they're cutting trees down and everything just to make a weekend camp and uh, for all the beer cans. There, there are two there are two designated campsites on Elwell, but they are yeah. designated for uh, row across America, and they're they're uh, right. they're for kayaks and canoes, and it's a right. it's supposed to be a one night minimum stay out there, and it, you're supposed to contact somebody, which I don't know if anybody in the city of Northampton even knows about these campsites. So yes, yeah, so we worked site. with we worked with the Appalachian Mountain Club to have those sites installed. Um, okay. So you don't need a reservation and you don't have to contact anybody, uh, but it, it's a, you know, it's a first come first serve carry in, carry out. Um, and no one should be camping any place but those two sites. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. I Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Let us know if we can help. Very good. Thank you. Um, now moving on to request for determination of applicability. Oh, first we got to have a continuation. There was a notice of intent for construction of an accessory residential structure on North Farms Road, and the applicant has requested a continuation to September 8th. Uh, so someone want to make a motion to continue that case uh, till September be, 8th? Uh, September 8th of 5.30. 5.30, first case. So moved. I'll second. second. I'll second. All right. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor? We need a roll call, Sarah? We do. All right. Jen? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Okay, now on to request for determination of applicability to determine if the septic work within the buffer zone will alter an area subject to our jurisdiction, uh, this at Dumphy Road. Um, so uh, who's here to present on that? Hi, my name is Neil Jackson from JMP Engineering Services. How are you? Okay, um, thanks. Welcome. I'm, I'm here representing Lori Schwartz for 27 Dumpfy Drive uh, <laughs> for a repair of a septic system. Um, if, if you have the plan in front of you, the, the, the existing system is just above a, a, a small retaining wall. Um, really, the only feasible place to put a new system is right below that retaining wall. The exist the tank is good, so we're keeping the tank. Uh, the area that we're going to be working is a uh, is the disturbed area. It's a it's all gardens, uh, fruit trees, so we're not cutting any trees. We're not we're not disturbing any any area that hasn't um, been previously disturbed. So it's really we're we're working. There's no associated BBW. We're we're working in the uh, within 83 feet of the bank of the stream. And you described the current system as having failed. Uh, is it uh, uh, leaking? What, what kind of failure? 
it's 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 backing up so it's in hydraulic failure right now and okay. they're selling the property so the d box up above is flooded so it hasn't it hasn't come to the surface yet but it's just a matter of time okay thank you other questions from commissioners Just a curiosity question, Sarah. There was one time maybe 10 years ago when we had a case where the septic system was failing in a jurisdictional area, but the way the city ordinance was written, it was actually, you couldn't go in to fix it because you would be violating the ordinance. And we got that change. Is, is this in a case where if we hadn't got that change, we'd be in trouble? Uh, this one's not. If it was a little closer, that, that issue okay. would come up. But it, right. yeah, we, we did, we were able to fix that. Um, Neil, how much material do you think will have to be brought onto the site? Oh, less than a hundred yards, very, very little material is going to be brought on site. And I did ask for a variance for, um, title five requires a five foot offset to groundwater. I requested a variance to, to, for a four foot offset. That way it keeps the system in the ground. So there's, there's, it's not going to be filled, and and so we're not changing the grade in that area. It's not a raised system, then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That we did that just to keep it in the ground. Yep. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? I can't see on the screen, but is there any uh, comments or questions from members of the public? If not, um, Sarah, your uh, uh, staff report indicated that uh, it will not um, alter a, a uh, I'm trying to see, so we could issue a negative determination, meaning yes, it's within the buffer zone, but will not constitute an alteration. So that's checking box three. Um, someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. Jen moves second. second. Jason second. Any dis further discussion? If not, uh, all in favor, Sarah? Jen? Yes. Jason? Uh, Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Good luck. Okay, great. I appreciate your time and you have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. So, uh, let's see. We also had a request for a certificate of compliance. Um, well, the first in order was any further uh, updates on any uh, open space acquisitions here? I, I put that on the agenda just in case anybody had questions about anything that's been approved recently or wanted to hear a little more about the Pomeroy acquisition. No, the, we saw it, uh, oh, we didn't do the minutes. Oh, ah, we didn't. We have, we have to approve minutes. And that was from- May 12th. Um, May 12th. And there, we were talking about at that point, that was that was a biggie. We were talking about a 230 acre ad at that yes. point. So, yeah. Uh, um, so uh, everybody had a chance to look at those minutes. Uh, uh, is there a motion to approve them? So moved. Mason moves and second. Second. Jen second. Any amendments, modifications? If not, all in favor? Sarah? Jen? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Um, okay, so now we go to the request for certificate of compliance on Ridgeview Road. Um, Sarah, you sent an explanation that uh, there's one lot that um, hasn't been developed. And so how, how would we, what, what kind of uh, certificate of compliance would we issue an invalid so the, one? Or? So uh, there were some lots at the ridge that included uh, construction within the buffer zone. This lot was not one of them. And since the overall subdivision didn't require a stormwater permit uh, through the Conservation Commission, there's nothing that would apply to this lot otherwise. Um, so the, the developer is now looking to 
um, close out the, this permit, um, build a house and associated stuff completely outside the buffer zone. So in, in this case, it's a little quirky, but it seemed like an invalid certificate to indicate that the whatever work was previously approved would, was not completed would make the most sense. Yeah, this is sort of sounds like a double negative to me. So no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes there there is a an order that applies to every lot in the subdivision right. because of the circumstances of the development, but that did not apply here. So it, it seemed so, fine to, to let this one out. So if, Help me understand. So, because usually a, a certificate um, of compliance rides with the deed um, for future ownership. What will a, an invalid certificate do to any of the deeds associated so, with this development? So, it will only take the order the order of conditions out of the chain of title for this one property. So, the burden this one, will still yeah. So, the burden will one still sub be on the, okay. yeah the overall developer to show that. The subdivision was done in compliance with whatever was supposed to be done, um, but none of that work applied to this lot in particular. And so this, this developer didn't have any information about how the, the subdivision as a whole was completed. We've had that before where uh, the lawyers will come in and say, lot seven, 12, and 36 are outside the buffer zone. And you release them from the rest of the subdivision so that, you know, it makes our job a lot easier to sell yeah, the uh, yeah, lot exactly. and so on. So when, so the, when a, uh, a subdivision is created, you know, it's just one big lot and then yeah. um, the, the road comes in and it gets divided up, but that the overall order still applies to every lot that's created, even though the work that occurred might only apply to like this one and this one. So this one's way over here, far away from the, the wetlands. So, but so in some ways we're, we're we are issuing a certificate of compliance. We're just saying it doesn't apply to this particular lot. Basically, yeah. Right. Basically, yeah. it doesn't need a certificate <laughs> of compliance. Yeah, right. yeah. And the only and, way know, to yeah the only way to say it doesn't need a certificate of compliance is to make it an invalid, invalid certificate. certificate. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and if screwy. the developer wanted to propose something in a wetlands resource or in the buffer zone on this lot, he would need to come in with a brand new permit application anyway. I see. Okay. All right. So, someone want to make a motion to grant an invalid certificate of compliance uh, for uh, this is the development on Ridgeview Road. Seven. No move. Seven. Mason moves and second. Second. Jillian seconds. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor. All right, Jen? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes, bewildered, in, but yes. <laughs> um, all right, do we have uh, anything else? I. Um, I haven't heard back yet from Chief uh, Casper about uh, the hiring of a, a, a second um, animal control officer. I'm still waiting. And if I haven't heard anything in a couple of weeks, because she said she expected to by around the end of the month. So if I haven't heard from her before our next meeting, I'll be in touch um, and see if we can begin uh, getting that piece in place where uh, she had said, yes, some time from that new hire would be available to patrol and otherwise uh, educate people um, about proper use of conservation lands having to do with their dogs. Um, but they still, and I just got back into town a day or two ago, Sarah. So at some point in the next couple of weeks, I'll come by and try to brainstorm with you about how we might um, present, plant the seed with city council that it would be useful given that we have 25% of uh, city property um, preserved to have some kind of, what do you call it, a ranger or a, an advocate or you know some staff person that isn't necessarily employed by the police department to uh, sure. help communicate yeah, and educate and if necessary, enforce the, the city requirements. Did you get the email from Randy? Yes, um, just the, the sort of networking on a neighborhood basis. Yeah, uh, that, that seemed like a, a pretty powerful idea to spread it out. Yeah. And I and, and I did ask him to share the, the language and, and any experience he's having with how that's working so we can borrow from their good ideas. Yeah, they, not all neighborhoods have 
you know, uh, online email distributions and ways to communicate that way. But those that do, that would be a useful tool. All right. Anything else for today? It's only six o'clock. Yes, Sarah. I, I was. I hadn't heard anything about uh, the Riverside Drive issue in a long while. I'm just curious if anything's changed. Yeah. So that is planned to be on the agenda for August 11th. Um, at, at least as an introduction. It is somewhat of a complicated permit, so I don't know if we'll be able to wrap everything up uh, for then, but we should be getting the peer review report from OTO within the next day or two, and I will send that along as soon as we get it. I, I actually uh, so you, spoke ahead, with the, the river sort of roads. I was thinking River Bank Road down, down by uh, the bridge. Remember that issue? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that, that is... Yeah, so that one's all set. So um, the property owner worked with Berkshire Design to put together a planting plan and a restoration plan. Uh, so that's that was approved by Natural Heritage, um, and I worked with them as well. And they'll be working on that in the fall. It, it didn't make sense to do any of the plantings now in the summer, especially this summer and with the drought we're having. But they're looking at doing the installation in September. Well, Jason's salivating for the report on uh, cutlery. <laughs> Well, Sarah just can't wait for that to come in. <laughs> an invitation for uh, us to visit Cutlery uh, on the second of August uh, at eleven o'clock. So. Oh, I didn't uh, hear that. So yeah, you should have received just an invitation from Sarah, right? Just this afternoon. So. And if you aren't able to join in for the site visit, I would encourage you um, to to go check it out, maybe from across the river or. You know, um, wait out there <laughs> or see. Uh, it's a difficult site to access. That's why a, a organized site visit seemed like a better opportunity for this one. It is fenced. It is a hazardous waste area. You know, no, nothing is exposed, um, but it's not open for public access. So it's difficult. August 2nd oh, so at 11 a.m. Yep. August 2nd, 11 a.m. And so that back parking lot isn't open anymore? Uh, so the, the back parking lot at the cutlery is, but... Um, the meeting place for this one, if you if you'll notice, isn't the actual cutlery building. It's the the smaller former fire department. Oh, uh, and then we'll be visiting the, the yeah. So we'll be visiting okay. the west side of the riverbank beyond that. Yeah. Are you sending that out? I mean, I didn't get anything on on the site visit. I sent. And I have it no right idea right. what fire engine or fire yeah, station. I sent it. I sent it right before the meeting, Mason. But I can send. Oh, it okay. About it also. All right. All right. Yeah, you're listed on the distribution, Mason. So that's it good. Be in your box somewhere. Right. Yeah, the last time I was there it was green soil. Yeah. Bright copper. Green. It was like like a nuke <laughs> site or something. It was really strange color. I've never seen a color like that in soil. Understand it was chromate. It had something yes. with making knives or something. I don't know. Yeah. Apparently, that's what they did there for a long yeah. time. All right. Um, so we've touched on. Uh, we'll follow up on the dog issue. We'll visit the cutlery building. We'll see. Sarah will get back to us about uh, enforcement at the. Um, the, the, the new beach. It's interesting how everybody who describes the problem describes it as a gem. It's really absolutely a wonderful place that if, if people I'm could still, use it. Where is it exactly? Um, so, the only place do you I know where the boathouse is, Mason? No, I haven't been the down there house? since I haven't been down there since that was constructed. Um, I know I there was, check it out. I know that the uh, area between Ellis Island and the mainland was filling in every time we had a storm. It used to be about 10 feet deep, and now you can walk across shorts on and not, not, you know, not get your pants wet. Well, it's north of there. Um, and okay. it's where the, uh, uh, when they first built it, they actually had a floating dock and a long um, uh, slanted uh, uh, walkway for, to bring the boats down. And then yeah. the first winter that got taken away by an, an ice flow 
um, and was, I think, eventually found sunk downstream somewhere. But uh, they now just carry the boats down the road and out a, a, a wooden dock, a floating dock. Um, and it's just to the south of that ramp is where this has all been built up. Okay. And we did get a grant to replace the the docks, um, and we're partnering with Northampton Community Rowing. They'll you know they'll do the annual putting in and taking out of that, and that's what they're doing fundraising for. Yeah, good organization. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna set up a site visit. I assume with that place too. Well, it, 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 that's uh, thanks for reminding me. We should have, since we have an offer. Um, we uh, to by land or by sea to um, uh, take a look. Uh, we could also schedule that. I, I'm familiar with the area. I, I haven't seen it be crowded, but I, I said to Sarah when we spoke this afternoon that I had last year gone up. A friend of ours has a pontoon boat that makes its way up the river, and we uh, go up at sunset and you know drink a glass of wine and. Uh, hang out on the river on a, on a summer evening. And I noticed that, oh, there's a big, huge pile of sand there that, that didn't used to be there. And there was What's maybe the at access? that time. The access well, it, 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 If you go right by the apartment complex that leads, uh, you know, off of Damon Road, it's yep. sort of river head, head straight north. Yeah, my daughter lives there. I know where that is. So if you so just drive keep past going there, that, yeah. they, that'll bring it to you. That's where oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know the place when it was a gravel pit and there still remains yep. <laughs> of the old Northampton canals. Yep, one end that's there. That's true. That's true. It's, so it's, it's basically now. the the entrance to the canal, Mason. Um, so oh. if you if you drive past River Run, uh, you yep. get to where the, the lane construction site used to be. Yep. And now there's a community boathouse or the parking lot. You can walk down the, the dock there and, and the beach is right in front of you. And it, it looks like it was a, a man-made beach. For the, Are the greenhouse is really built nice. yet? Uh, for the marijuana facility? No, not yet. Yeah. I didn't realize that Northampton had 12 facilities. And for What's well, community rowing? It used to be um, you know, per person. The Oxbow, <laughs> and they rented space from the guy down at the Oxbow who was sort of known for not being very fastidious about conservation rules. Um, but the, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, uh, I don't know, what was it, Sarah, six years ago, seven years ago, then they moved, maybe eight years ago, uh, moved and then constructed the new facility up by the old lane uh, gravel place. So uh, it's actually a nice place. But. What's the one off yeah. Damon Road? Is that another rowing facility there? No, that's the, the that's the one we're talking about. Damon Ro oh. Road is where the your driveway to River Run goes. Oh, okay. Mason, do you mean the old UMass facility at, yeah. at the state site? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if they use that anymore, uh, but that was the previous rowing access for a lot of groups before they moved to the the new city boathouse. Oh, okay. They, I, I think the men's team still does. I'm not sure of okay. that. Uh, the women's team has now got a fancy new boathouse over on oh, the right. other side of Route yeah. 9. So um, they they have a, a Title IX has, has done good things for um, the UMass women's team. Uh, and they've got a nice facility there. Yeah, but, but go check the beach out if you're not familiar with it. Um, you know, the access and most of the issues are happening on recreation department. Um, you know, active recreation land, but the Conservation Commission does control the, the, the forest greenway. And greenway around it. Yeah. Right. yeah, I'll probably go up and take another look since I haven't seen it in a couple of years or a year and a half. So. Yeah, you Good. can walk right to it now. It's very different than it used to be. All right, well, I'm, on the 11th, um, I'm going to be on Cape Cod, but I should have good access um, to uh, internet and um, so I should be able to, to chair that meeting. Uh, but Mason, are you around if I can't? The only reason I say I might not be able to is because our daughter from the West Coast is flying in and it might be one of the few days that we can have dinner together. So if that's true, then I'll ask you to take over. Yeah, I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I, didn't before, <laughs> I didn't before the pandemic. <laughs> and now it's just the same. You know? Yeah, I'll, I'll be All right, around. good, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. 
So I am ahead. actually out of town that week, the 11th. Um, I could zoom in if necessary, but maybe I can just be in touch with you, Sarah. Okay. If, if I'm quorum, I'll do it. Um, okay. just so we don't have to reschedule, but Good, thank if you. I'm not necessary, it would be nice to okay. skip it. Early September yeah. is going to be a problem with me. Um, first meeting in September, I'm not sure when that is. Uh, the 8th, 8th. If, if we get permits. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we have this North Farms Road one. So I should be able to make that. It's the next meeting after I've uh, taken care of the other hip. On <laughs> well, oh, <no. laughs> well, you're going to have pretty soon you're going to be bionic. You have all these replacement parts going in. I've got jury duty August 29th. I can't wait to go through that machine because it's going to just be bells and whistles going off, and I'm going to be standing here and say, shoulder, hip, <laughs> E. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, Sarah. Yep. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Yep. See you in a couple yep. of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.